Un minut, si és cas, de la presentació de l'acte, sobretot perquè volem començar a fer publicitat dels 30 anys del grup de les Guardones, que no és poc, eh? Que no és poc, eh? Ja hem arribat a l'edat adulta. I, bueno, lligat amb els 30 anys, sí que vam haver de posar pensant com ho celebraven, què volien fer, què volien compartir amb totes vosaltres que ens heu acompanyat, i una de les coses és un cicle de xerrades, hem decidit començar per l'Afganistan perquè és un conflicte oblidat, ja no és mediàtic i com que no és mediàtic s'invisibilitza, no? Encerament les mirades dels mitjans se'n van cap a un altre conflicte. Farem més endavant un altre amb les dones ucraïneses, amb les palestines, les iranianes, que són les últimes relacions que estem fent i estem fent ara aquí a casa nostra i que totes elles tenen la unitat comú que són dones refugiades refugiades que han vingut de diferents circumstàncies, conflictes armats o guerres, etc. La relació que nosaltres hem tingut i continuem tenint a l'Afganistan ve de molts, molts anys. Ara li estava preguntant a la Xola quan va ser quan van conèixer la Glòria i jo i el cap de refugiats de les famílies afganeses i fa 22 anys, 22 anys. Però ja venia d'abans. Aquí va arribar la primera dona que van conèixer va ser a la Bajat, que era el seu nom clandestí. Bueno, Montserrat, jo em posava els altres. El seu nom era Bajat. De Ragua, de l'associació de Ragua. I ens va acompanyar cada vegada a Barcelona, va venir amb nosaltres a les jornades feministes de Còrdoba, recordo. I a partir d'aquí, doncs, amb totes les dones de França s'anà passant. Hem tingut la gran sort de conèixer dones tan fortes i valuoses com la mateixa Bellat, com a l'Eva, que està per aquí, la filla de la Xola, la Xola, evidentment, i la Nàdia Golan. Jo crec que són unes dones que elles per si soles representen el títol que li donem avui a l'acte, no? La força de les dones és la seva resistència. I avui tindrem aquí la Malala i Joia, que ja us explicarà ella la seva trajectòria també. I recordeu que va ser diputada en el primer Parlament democràtic, molt entre comillant-lo, de democràtic, quan van entrar els americans que volien alliberar les dones, oi? I els van deixar després allà abandonats a la seva mala sort, que és ben dit. I ella va ser això, diputada al Parlament amb el govern Carzai, i a partir d'aquí ella que us expliqui una miqueta la seva vida, la seva trajectòria, i bueno, una abraçada i encantada de tenir-la. Parlava en anglès, perdoneu. Parlava en anglès, perdoneu, si en anglès, la trobem la Carla, que no l'ha presentada, de Suts, eh? I la Lema, que està per aquí, doncs també parlarà després. La Lema, vinga. Okay, we start with the questions. Uh, the first question, where were you born and how was your childhood? Yes, um, la primera pregunta is, on vas néixer y con vas la teva infantesa? Hello to everyone. Before to answer the question, I want to say um, congratulations to our anniversary of uh, the years of Elena Pardona, uh, who invited me here and gave me this opportunity to have a speech today on behalf of the Sahara and people of Afghanistan, especially in Primero tot, vol felicitar els 30 anys de Lola Cordona i donar moltes gràcies per convidar-la a parlar avui a aquesta xerrada. I call myself a world generation as when I open my eyes I born a war start in Afghanistan. Ella es considera de la generació de la guerra perquè des del primer moment que va néixer hi havia guerra al seu país. I was four years old that with my family we moved the first to Iran and then to Pakistan. Amb dos anys es va mudar cap a Iran i després cap a Pakistan. Not only my family, many years of Afghan, they became refugee and my generation and their whole life they just experienced War, 
No va ser només ella, la seva família, que van haver d'emigrar com a refugiats, sinó que van ser molts altres afganistans i es van trobar amb molts problemes de pobresa, de la impossibilitat de trobar un treball i molts altres problemes com a refugiats. So the root causes of all the problems in Afghanistan is and was war and occupation and also are the extremist fundamentalists who were in power and more than even they were against movements. Els problemes estructurals d'Afganistan de la guerra han sigut bàsicament els extremistes fonamentalistes que sobretot estaven en contra dels drets de les dones. Més qüestions? La pregunta és, com era el teu fill? Vols anar al següent? Tinc molt de parlar, però tinc més qüestions. La pregunta és, com era el teu fill? the trajectory as an activist started and why you started it. Y la pregunta es, ¿cuándo comenzó la tuya trayectoria como activista y por qué? I was uh, in high school uh, when I started uh, being activist. Um, uh, I was, uh, in the morning I was a student, in the evening I became teacher for the literacy courses for the women. Va començar a l'institut, pels matins anava a l'escola, a classe, i per les tardes i nit donava classes a les dones sobre aquests temes. Aquestes dones que no van poder llegir i que no van poder llegir, 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 i que no van poder llegir. La majoria dels seus estudiants, d'aquestes dones, eren analfabetes, no sabien escriure ni llegir, i moltes d'elles eren alfones. And this is how I started to be activist uh, as a social activist. Uh, I grew up in an educated family that um, for my parents' education was very important and always uh, telling us, encouraging us to learn education. And um, uh, so uh, um, at that time in the refugee center, uh, some uh, women, because of the war, they were not able to go to school. And, and that's why they had some project for literacy courses and I became a teacher. I was commencing to be an actor social a través de l'educació i ensenyant a aquestes dones als centres de refugiats, que és el que estàvem dient abans, que eren alfabetes i no tenien aquest recurs. I heard a lot of suffering stories of these families that then, this is how I know the history of Afghanistan. At that time, it was 1998, when I finished high school, there was on that time Taliban came in power in Afghanistan for the first time. As you know, Taliban, how much they are extremists and they banned the doors of school for the girls. And it was a time that I got a decision with my family to move to the uh, west part of Afghanistan, to Herat and Farah province, where I born in Farah. Uh, so there I became teacher, underground teacher with Burka. Va ser el 1998 que van arribar els talibans per primera vegada i van prohibir l'educació a les dones i va ser el moment en què la seva família van decidir mudar-se cap a la part l'oest d'Afganistan i allà va continuar amb la seva educació cap a les dones. About some of my memories of my activities as an activist, you can read in my book as well that I have been written. It is, I think, translated in Spanish too. Bueno, que muchas de las mismas vivencias como activistas la la puedo trobar en su libro y que creo que creo que está traducida. I jump quickly from this as it is the answer of this question would be too long. Just to tell you briefly how I fall from social activism to politics. I am telling you this story now. Ara explicarà de manera breu, perquè podria contestar aquesta pregunta de manera molt llarga, com va passar d'activista social a política. As I told you, I had close contact with suffering Afghan people, especially victim families, suffering women, 
uh, despite I learned a lot from them, uh, in the meantime, they always uh, with their support to not leave me alone. And on that time also, they encouraged me if I ran in the election uh, to see um, that I will uh, receive the votes or not. Uh, the first time when I ran was election of 2003, that we were making our constitution on that time. So uh, the boxes was open on that time. The woman uh, election was separate with the men. So as I was famous because of my activism uh, in my province, Faro, uh, that is why um, after my speech I recognized a lot of words. With high words, um, I found a way uh, in Rojava 2003 that we were making constitution. Mai el 2003 va ser quan va decidir eh, presentar-se a les eleccions perquè li van donar el suport a aquestes dones amb, amb les que treballava i va ser també un moment en 2003 que s'estava creant la nova Constitució i estaven les eleccions on estaven les dones i els homes. So this is how um, I fall in politics. You know, situation of Afghanistan's political situation, especially we are a war generation, so more than even than bring my school politics. But in Afghanistan, doing politics, I mean that to be honest politician, telling the truth, uh, first receiving death threats, the life fall in danger, as those who are in power uh, wants to eliminate. And later I will share more of my memories with you about my life that still uh, I received a threat. Yeah, and then uh, when I went to Logica 2003, first time I saw the warlords, um, you also may hear their name that before of Taliban who were in power and they are responsible for the civil war from 92 to 96. First time their criminal faces I saw in the big assembly in Kabul in 2003, uh, who had mask of democracy and tried to control Lohjika and uh, imposed on the destiny of Afghan people after 9-11. En que bueno cuando estaba en la asamblea al que ya veo veía era todos aquellos criminales de guerra a una máscara de democracia hasta Woods al Parlamento. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I you maybe saw some of you I don't know later you can see uh, the clip that uh, where I had a speech. Uh, I said that those who are here most of them they must be uh, questions they must go to the court because of the crime they committed they are responsible of the war and um, uh, I said that they must not come to the national court they must come to the international criminal courts for the crimes they committed I have a clip that I don't know if you will put it on where she is talking to the parliament and saying that many of those who are here are good they would go to the judiciary but not to the judiciary national of the country but to the and um, you see on that uh, clip that how most of the uh, so-called representatives, they stand up against me, that uh, yelling against me and want to physically beat. And that moment, my life fall at rest and formally fall at politics. Was in a game moment you were the most represalious for the per aquest, uh, per aquest acte que havia fet i va ser aquell moment que la seva vida realment estava en perill i la seva personalitat política va caure. And then, in 2005, parliamentary election came. I el 2005 van arribar les eleccions parlamentàries. Again, people ask me, Malole, run for parliamentary election. Even people didn't see my age, I just was 25 years old. They didn't see my gender as a woman, but they are asking me to uh, run for presidential election and then parliamentary election. I when she was missing, she eh, had 25 years old, she was a woman, but she was also able to get support from everyone to demand that she was present in these elections. Itself uh, is a good example to show that people of Afghanistan, this uh, suffering people, non-educated people, um, they um, 
practically they believe in democracy, but those who are in power with the mask of democracy, they were against democracy. Elementary meaning of uh, democracy is government of people for people, but the enemies of people were in power. Que básicamente que que estaba el poder era los eran los enemigos de la gente y que Sí, que la gente realmente creía en la democracia, por eso le daban a ella que las presentes a las elecciones, pero realmente no había democracia como tal y por muchos militantes que es un cambio que las presentes no había cambio, pero la gente cara seguía creyendo en esta democracia que no existía. Then you know my story in Parliament. The first day in Parliament when I enter, that I received dead threats and physically I have been treated. Even they threatened me to rape inside of Parliament because of telling the truth. And many, many stories like this that later, if you want, I will give you some examples. Yo tengo muchísimas historias de, desde el primer día que va a entrar al Parlamento, de que va a rebre um, amenazas de amor, amenazas de violación dentro del Parlamento y que realmente también ha sido agredida físicamente. Yeah. So, since um, 2007, I was in Parliament. In 2007, May, May 2007, they expelled me from Parliament, which was illegal act, because they could not make me silent. They censored one of my interviews, used it against me. So, que al marzo del 2007 la van a hacer fuera del Parlamento, que yo va a ser un acto ilegal, y que de hecho también iban a censurar muchos de sus discursos. So since that time, till now, I continue struggle. Uh, I traveled, uh, attended countless. Uh, Um, events, conferences, countless interviews I did, and from, from every tribune I tried to use on behalf of suffering Afghan people, especially the women of Afghanistan, the voiceless women of Afghanistan, to bring their message to just Islamic people of the world, like you. <coughs> Y desde aquel momento, pues, a to todas las oportunidades que tengo, como a Wii, eh, ser un activista para la gente, sobre todo las zonas de Afganistán, y yo trato contra todo el shock que aquí tiene la posibilidad de ir sin sacar la censura. Sí, cuando el Taliban vino a la poder, para mí, despite having woke up and having bodyguard, was rescue. So that is why um, I got the decision to leave Afganistán. Y aunque que ya seguía con las normas de Puerto del Burka y todo eso a Afganistán, aunque era un buen riesgo para ella y va a decidir de nos marchar. ¿Cómo fue tu país antes de la llegada de los Taliban? ¿Cómo era tu país antes de la llegada de los Taliban? Afghanistán Human rights, democracy, catastrophic situation of women was very good excuse for them mm -hmm. to interfere on that time. But unfortunately, they pushed us from the frying pan into the fire. They replaced the warlord, the Taliban, with the warlords who are photocopy of each other. Doncs que després, bueno, amb l'arribada dels americans, després del 11S, eh, que venien amb aquest discurs de democràcia, de drets humans, eh, va ser encara pitjor. Va a empeorar muchísimo la situación porque van a poner a los talibans a más que estaban al poder, a los que habían creado toda esta guerra y van a empeorar la situación. So, some of the western technocrats also come in power who do not have bloody hands like Taliban. 
like warlords, but they sought to compromise with these powers and, and somehow indirectly share their crimes. And there were a bunch of puppets, these Western technocrats, in exchange of dollar, in exchange of uh, chairs, I start doing compromise. So our people hate them as well. I van arribar eh, tecnocrates de l'Oest, que al final eren... es van, van començar a negociar amb els talibans i eren, compartien indirectament els crims de guerra, ens diu, i de nou van pitjorar la situació. Yeah, so um, uh, on that time, if to compare the situation of that time with the Taliban, that now again they come in power, uh, it is true that some humanitarian project they did in Afghanistan. For example, especially in the big cities where the foreigner can come in Herat, in Kabul, in Mazar Sharif, etc., uh, just for justification of their occupation. In rural area, almost they did nothing in the past 20 years. Eh, per diferenciar la situació dels talibans de, el que ens estava parlant ara de, la primera vegada comparat amb actualment, la diferència és que en aquell moment pues, eh, es van començar alguns programes de reformes perquè realment no, no era i que eren més a les grans ciutats i no a les zones rurals. Uh, hundreds of billions of dollars uh, this uh, corrupt mafia regime received from the so-called international community, including the Spanish government. But most of money has been looted by these warlords, drug lords, and these Western technocrats. I que tot aquest govern dels tecnocrates de l'Oest, els talibans, i tot això rebien eh, milions de, de dòlars de la comunitat internacional, però que realment era tot corrupció i no arribava. Uh, in the past 20 years, they have changed Afghanistan to the center of the drug in the world. You may also hear these reports from different sources, not only you and that more than 90% of opium in the world produced from Afghanistan. Can you see that again? Um, I said they have changed Afghanistan to the center of the drug in the world, to the center of the mafia, drug, plenty of opium. Okay. Que, el, que ara tot això ha portat que ara el Afganistan sigui el centre de les drogues de l'òpium i que s'ha creat aquest negoci. Yeah. More than 90% of opium in the world produced from Afghanistan in the past 20 years. Que en els últims 20 anys el 90% de la producció d'òpium és a Afganistan. Uh, the reason that uh, U.S. and NATO interfere in Afghanistan, especially U.S., because of the geopolitical location of Afghanistan. We are in the heart of Asia. To Afghanistan will have easily access to the gas and oil of the Central Asian Republics. To Afghanistan, uh, they will, um, uh, as I told you, they are making uh, millions and billions of dollars of drug. Um, they are looting our mines, rich mine that we have, our copper mine in the world is the best copper mine, the second best copper mine in the world, our copper mine. And um, each of these uh, imperialist governments, including the neighbor countries, they tried to have their own fishes from the muddy water. I mean, each of them, they interfere in Afghanistan issues for their own and trust. Que la intervenció dels Estats Units i la OTAN és pur interès perquè Afganistan té una localització geopolítica molt important perquè està al cor de l'Àsia i està al gas, està en les mines i que és bàsicament interès. Later, if you want, I will share with you to talk more about the past 20 years, to talk about the past 20 years, about the war crime that the US and NATO did, about the barbarism of the warlord, Taliban, and um, corruption of these uh, Western technocrats. All these, uh, it, uh, it is not possible even in one uh, day or night to explain to you. One hour is nothing. And later, if you want, I will give you more example. Uh, even uh, since that time, people start to be immigrate because on that time also people were suffering, were suffering of the joblessness and poverty, especially in the rural areas. As I told you, they almost did nothing, and uh, from one side, 
a warlord was in power and their local the local warlords continued to their barbarism against people especially women from another side Taliban they had their own government <laughs> 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 Um, I'm sorry, I forget that. Can you translate? Yeah. But you got the point, no? Yeah, I, I summarized it a little yeah. bit. Um, bueno, primero, antes de decir que si te has pensado que los pico en mi cambio hasta que tú tienes 20 años y tú te viste la situación de los Estados Unidos y la corrupción de la que lo harán encantada porque digo que una hora no es suficiente para todo lo que ha pasado. Y también yo estaba bien que es va a ser en aquel momento en el que estaban hablando eh, cronológicamente que va a haber una gran migración sobre todo en las zonas rurales. Bien. Sí. Ok. Entonces, vamos a hablar de tu rol. I mean, you talked a little bit about this before, but do you want to know about your role as a deputy uh, during Karzai's president region and what do you remember about this time and why did you quit? Um, ara parlarem del seu càrrec com a diputada durant el govern del president Karzai i bueno, què recorda aquest període i per què va deixar el càrrec? Uh, I think I already answered this question, yes, yes, but uh, yes, yes. just to briefly to tell you, maybe this question for you, why they expelled me from parliament? Because each time when I was raising my finger, my hand, to talk, um, there are most of the parliamentarians, they were uncomfortable on their chairs. Mm -hmm. Do you know why? Because each one was thinking this time, which one will be exposed? The crime, yeah. corruption, human rights, human rights violation, or which one will be exposed? Que cada vez que se acababa el Parlamento, eh, todos estaban muy incómodos porque pensaban sí, que a quién le tocará, a quién dirá vale tú la corrupción, siempre estaban muy incómodos. Few, few representatives was there, men and women, but you were finger even you cannot count them. They were very little, you know, and um, even from their position, they misuse for the so-called democracy. Look, here, for example, some Democrats also in the parliament that, uh, but they were not talking about this important issue that there is no chance for them. Even they misuse democracy against us. You know, democracy, majority, minority. Majority seats belongs to them. Easy for them to make uh, disgusting laws, misogynist laws, that is why in the past 20 years all the laws exist on the people. If it was useful for them, they use otherwise look like a wisp. <laughs> okay, you, you understand that. That's yeah. it. No? I said that um what I said. You were so much. <laughs> yeah, I said that we had jungle law. Because the parliament is jungle law. You know jungle law. We are the law not exist. There is no court. Aquí no había, eh, I mean, we had court, but the court infected with the violence of fundamentalists. Sí, In fact, we have no court. No, Daniel. Eh, jungle law, they know jungle law, I think. Yes, jungle law. Yes. You know the jungle law? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, yes. Sí, yes. Sí, yes. 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 So, why they expelled me from Parliament? Uh, because um, I um, as I told you, I was saying the truth, and once I uh, divided uh, the parliamentarian into two parts, I said most of the parliamentarians, they are the warlords, they are drug lords, they are the criminals, and they are more wild than some wild animals to compare. That's why I said because of this, the parliament is not the national house, it is like zoo. It is like animal estimate. Yeah. Bueno, una de las razones por las que la van a expulsar del Parlamento no sé por qué va a decir que todos los representantes del Parlamento eran como animales salvajes y va a comparar al Parlamento con un zoo. And the second part, uh, I said that there are few representatives, as I told you earlier, they are real representatives, but they are very few. 
people. So they did censor one of my interview and used that against me that said Malala insulted the parliamentarian, the National House, so that they voted against me, which is illegal act because I was elected, not selected. So they expelled me from parliament. It was easy for them. So, I, I com estàvem dient abans, doncs això que van censurar molts dels seus eh, discursos i que eh, van utilitzar, van pensar dir que ell havia parlat malament del Parlament i de totes les entitats polítiques del país i la van fer fora, cosa que de nou era il·legal perquè ja havia estat, no havia estat seleccionada sinó que l'havia votat la gent. So, despite national and international condemnation, as in different provinces become demonstration in different countries that a large number, a big amount of support I received internationally. But despite of this, they are not allowed to go back to parliament. They were saying, if I say apologize, I can go. Then I think you are agree with me that to say apologize to the useful animals that are compared with these criminals. And the uh, animal is stable is the cow, the donkey. <laughs> The dog, the, you know, these animals, animals, how much useful? Eh, bueno, que encara que tinguen suport de la comunitat internacional, li van dir que l'única manera de tornar al Parlament era si demanava perdó i ella obviament va dir que això seria com dir-li perdó a un burro, a una vaca, perquè els comparava amb animals. So I lost the tribune of the Parliament, but I got many tribune of the justice-loving people around the world and also a strong solidarity of my people. Inside of National House, I was totally alone. I feel myself alone, but outside I was not alone. People, suffering people, was with me. So that is why still this struggle on behalf of my people, I continue. Support of each of them, big responsibility on my shoulder to continue to my struggle against warlord Taliban, these drug lords and their foreign master, I mean occupiers. I encara que no tenia possibilitat d'estar al Parlament i totes aquestes entitats polítiques del seu país, tenia el suport de la comunitat internacional i més important tenia el suport de la pròpia gent d'Afganistan i per això avui en dia diu que cada vegada que ve a parlar sobre el seu país i la situació sent que doncs que la gent està amb ella, però també té la pressió de poder comunicar-ho bé i d'aconseguir més suport encara a nivell internacional. Un segon. Because I'm going to translate the question first. Um, Després de deixar el càrrec que has, que has estat fent, has seguit el teu treball com a activista? So, as I told you, after telling the truth, my life fell at risk. And to tell you briefly, my life was not normal life. I have to have bodyguards. Despite having bodyguards, two times they attacked my office. And once two of my bodyguards savagely become injured, we brought them in couple at the hospital, you can see on my Facebook, the media get report. So receiving death threats, have to change houses, cannot live with my family, a lot of sacrifices I have to do. Després de fer la seva carrera com a diputada, la seva vida es va complicar encara més, perquè anava sempre amb seguretat, i la seva seguretat va ser atacada en acabar l'hospital, no podia viure amb la seva família, va haver de fer molts sacrificis. And the most problem, if someone asked me, was what? The most problem was that, for, for me, was painful to not have office. Because I was famous, people from different parts of Afghanistan was coming to meet me. And if I had office, not only dangerous for me, also for those who are coming to meet. I tampoc podia tenir una oficina, obviament, perquè també estava amenaçada i que això és el que més mal li va fer, no poder tenir una oficina on parlar amb la gent i més que res perquè era un perill, no només per ella, sinó per la gent que venia a parlar amb ella i donar-li suport. Because I believe in political awareness, 
when we talk with people, communication with the woman, to talk with them directly face to face about the woman rights, the role of the woman, about their identity, it is very useful, I found it. They are trusting you, they are listening to you. But unfortunately, I didn't have office. And the supported houses and trustable houses with a lot of problems, you know, challenges, I was organizing meeting to meet them. Or some progressive activist offices. This is how I communicate with people. It was really difficult. <clears throat> que ella trobava que era molt important parlar cara a cara amb les dones i poder tenir aquest, aquesta confiança i per això li feia molt mal no poder fer això a la seva oficina, no tenia un espai i llavors havia d'organitzar com coses més clandestines per poder parlar amb, amb totes aquestes dones i amb tota la gent que li donava suport i poder transmis, transmetre el seu missatge. Sí, yeah, several times they did assassination attempts to kill me political conspiracy to change the mind of people. But they were not able, fortunately. I was lucky and I had by chance, you know, and also I tried to be careful. Anyway, but now uh, that I'm here, also I try to be the wise of the wiseless people of Afghanistan, especially. Eh, que, bueno, va haver-hi bastantes conspiracions i la van intentar matar diverses vegades, però per sort no va tenir sort, no va passar. I que avui en dia doncs, l'únic que vol que és, és ser una veu per, tot, per tota la gent d'Afganistan, especialment les dones. Okay. Um, how is your life as a, well, a refugee? I com és la teva vida com a refugiada? My life being not only my life, let's say, how is the life of the refugees? not only refugees of Afghanistan, refugees of Syria and Iraq, you know, refugees of Palestine and many other countries, war torn countries, now Ukraine, that the same history of Afghanistan repeating there, the same history. Who, the root causes of all the problem is the wrong policies of the uh, warmonger governments that interfere in the internal issues of other countries and double their miseries and sorrows as what they did in my country, unfortunately. So the, that is why uh, the wave of asylum seeker, um, to say better the responsibility, the Western government have. Because support the wrong people, bring them in power, mm -hmm. and interfere in their, their internal issues, and then because of insecurity and because of the joblessness and many other problems, human rights, women rights violation, they have to leave the country. Doncs que eh, no només és la seva vida com a refugiada, sinó de molts altre, a moltes altres poblacions, i ha posat l'exemple de Ucrània. I també es parla de que com el problema estructural de tot això és la intervenció de països terciaris a aquests conflictes que no fan molt per solucionar les coses, sinó que empitjora i que fa que hi hagi una instabilitat, una inseguretat i fa que tota, aquesta, tota la població d'aquests països hagin de migrar i tornar, tornar-se a refugiats. The refugees who are coming here, they are suffering of... Um different kind of discrimination here in these countries. And um, also even in some countries, they don't behave like a human to them. Imagine what they did in Turkey, what they did in Greece, what they did in Iran, what they did in Pakistan, you know? Their behavior even not like human to refugees. Not only second class human citizens que desafortunadament els refugiats eh, en tots els països que han emigrat i més no són tractats com éssers humans, no els dona eh, els drets que han de tenir com a refugiats i com a persones i que són tractats ni com a segona classe de ciutadans sinó com el pitjor del pitjor. En my point of view, being refugee, I think you are agree with me, not quite. They must behave according to international law of refugee with the refugees. This is my last message to them, especially that they are responsible for the catastrophic, disaster situation of each of these war-torn countries, not only Afghanistan. <laughs> <laughs> que 
digo que ser refugiado no es un crimen, que se han de cumplir los derechos y las leyes uh, internacionales sobre los refugiados y que realmente la gente, la, las poblaciones, los países que han aplicado todas estas leyes, que son las que reban, uh, acuden a todos estos refugiados, son las que han, creo, han creado muchas de las situaciones al intervenir a los países como es el caso de Afganistán. NATO, you know, NATO including the Spanish government, they followed the footstep of the U.S. and Afghanistan, which was war crime. From the sky, they were bombing the foreigner. In the ground, the Taliban warlord continued to their barbarism. What is the difference between the NATO and America? Let me give you some example to remember. Maybe you hear it in the news. In, in Faro province, America did a bombardment, one bombardment, few examples I'm giving you, while they are countless bombardment, you know? Even they did bombardment of our wedding parties. In, in Faro, the American did bombardment, 150 people in one day were killed. And even they used white phosphorus. In Kunduz, <laughs> in Kunduz, German troops, yeah. Estaba hablando de los bombardeos que afecta a los Estados Unidos, a Talibán y Estados Unidos, a Afganistán y Estados Unidos, muchos ejemplos. Y bueno, como puede ver, hasta realmente enfadada por la situación. Sí, no, los franceses, para comparar a NATO con la U.S., se siguen los footsteps. Lo dije, en Farah, los americanos hicieron bombardeos, en Kunduz, Uh, German troops said bombardment that 19 people were killed and most of them were the kids, the children, the media people. <laughs> Voy a decir también a los países de la OTAN, voy a continuar a lo que se hace a los Estados Unidos y también con Francia y Alemania, también vamos a compartir. Y muchos, muchos ejemplos que tengo que no hay diferencia. Mm -hmm. They cometed war crimes. They must be questioned too. Y que tenemos muchos ejemplos de eso, de todos estos gobiernos de IUS, de Occidente, y que habrían también de ser tratados como criminales de guerra. They wasted their blood, they wasted their taxpayer money, your taxpayer money. From your pocket taking and giving to the corrupt people in Afghanistan, I mean to the warlord, to, to this mafia, to their pocket. So, they betrayed their own people too. In the past 20 years, the U.S. soldier was there pretending we are fighting against terrorism. But now they brought, they, we are fighting against Taliban, now they brought Taliban in power. So they betrayed their own people too, the blood of their own soldiers too. Not only Afghan people. También todos aquests eh, governs occidentals también han traicionat els seus propis eh, combatents perquè ara estan els talibans al poder, eh, perquè sempre es como nos estaban diciendo, has de ayudar contra que estas personas ya ahora están al poder para los recursos que aquellos nativos gobiernos han sido dando. Mm -hmm. yes. um, how do you see the situation of Afghanistan nowadays? Oh my God, <laughs> <laughs> worse than ever, believe me. Yes. I think I think now it is easier to explain about how the situation because now. 20 years they were raising through the propaganda machine that about Taliban. I think only enough that they did 9-11 tragedy. And now we all know about Taliban. I think it makes it easier for us as actors to explain about Taliban. At least in the past 20 years it was a little difficult to take the time to explain who are the warlords, why? Because the warlords, when they were in power on that time, the world forgot it, Afghanistan. Same now they are forgetting. Same like today. They, they did not record the crimes of that time. Okay, wait. So, Let now me. easy to talk about Taliban because you know Taliban. So, I le preguntat eh, com és la situació d'Afganistan avui en dia i bueno, primer tot diu que ara eh, obviament hi ha més propaganda sobre tot això dels talibans que coneixen millor la situació per el que ha, ha passat i per tant és més fàcil per ella parlar de la situació que coneixem, que no fa 20 anys. Yeah, our people say that after 9-11, uh, the donkey is the same, only sudden changed. I mean, one puppet regime went, another puppet regime came. They brought Taliban through Isaiah, Pakistan supported them. Through, through Doha and Qatar, you may hear that they first opened the office for them there, they brought them in power, under the name of so-called peace reconciliation. Peace without justice is meaningless. 
Same. In the past 20 years, they betrayed democracy. Now they betrayed peace. Okay. This peace is more dangerous than the war. Okay. Impossible um, to break peace by Taliban. Let me translate. Yeah. Um, eh, está bien que mm, básicamente todos los gobiernos que se han ganado, uh, bueno, que han estado en Afganistán, todos han sido eh, gobiernos de marionetas, que que se está dues, y sí, de titellas exactamente, y que que han mismo tan bueno mal discurso de reconciliación de Pau, pero que están traicionando como en su momento van a traicionar la justicia, pues van a traicionar la Pau. Okay. Situation of women worse than ever. Now people mainly because of insecurity, joblessness, they are leaving the country. Wave of asylum seeker more than ever. You hear about the, the news. Uh, people, mothers of my country, even uh, they are ready to sell their children, their daughters, their kidneys. They commit suicide because cannot tolerate a situation like this, you know? Half of the population of the country, the woman like to be in the jail. They not allow them to have job, to go to school and to be active. A society with half of the population to be arrested in the house, how possible the society to improve? Okay. And in many, many, the society look like a dead body. Yeah. Without education. <laughs> que la sociedad está muerta porque con pot pretendrá que al 50 por ciento de la población esté a casa tancada que la situación de las zonas es la pichó que así es más que bueno ya os hablé no no puedan trabajar no puedan trabajar educación sí que ha visto hasta de donas que han habido dentro de las nuevas fillas y eso es una situación horrible about the situation of women the situation of women um, and, uh, and, and children like daughters and yeah daughters. women and children in the past 40 years of the war they were the most victim is still they still they are because the sworn enemies of the women in power under the different banner as i told you ratio when invaded afghanistan they, their banner was good food good house good uh, etc but uh, then uh, when uh, uh, the American did occupy Afghanistan under the name of democracy, and now that they brought Taliban under the name of so-called justice, you know, peace reconciliation. Mm -hmm. And who are the victims when the extremists come in power? The women. Que las víctimas al final cuando todos los extremistas arriban al poder acaban siendo siempre las donas. Tan cuando va la intervención de Estados Unidos con el gobierno de Taliban, que es al mateix a un diferente nombre. I have photos of the past 20 years, the woman is stoned today in the Taliban, you know, in the rural area. The um, forced marriages, child brides, but now more publicly there. The first the time with Taliban again, they came in power. The first the stoning to date, dead in Farah province, in my province. Two women publicly, they in the support the stadium, they killed. Like the first time what they did with Zalmina in Kabul. The support the stadium, they used for their prosecution, killing the people publicly. And uh, 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 beat women with lashes, many examples. Yes, she is examples of the different women for 20 years and now in India. And in the province, they are killing women with lashes. Padradas, eh, que también las han torturado de muchísimas maneras, que han tornado eh, un spy con un estadi sí. a, a un lloc públic de... Sí. Imagine, they banned them even from their elementary rights as a human. They not allow them to go to the park, not allow them to go to the sports club. And many, many, even not allow them to sit in the front of the taxi, imagine que han sido tres malos tres como han o si sigui, normales la persona de anar al parc de segura a de segura de van a un taxi. They believe women must be used for their sexual lust, you know, uh -huh. and their children. That's all. As the war of the banner was uh, during the civil war, women must be at the house or in the grave. This is what they believe. 
I bueno, el que creuen és que les dones han d'estar... Bueno, només serveixen per tenir fills i per als plats sexuals dels homes i que han d'estar a casa cuidant dels fills. Oh, amors. Yes, many, many things in common. As I told you, they are photocopy of each other. One Lord and Caliban. You know only the name is different. Now Isis. Isis also. The color of the flag is different. The Taliban color of the flag is uh, white and the eyes is black. That's all. The nature is sick. The godfather of all of them is the foreign countries, Western countries, especially US. Since Cold War, created, nourished, empowered, they still use them for their own interests. Taliban was, with the Taliban in the past 20 years, they played the game of the Tom and Jerry. They did not expire for their foreign master, now brought them again, she missed in power. Doncs que són tant els talibans com els de ISIS i tot això són les... És el mateix, és el que estava dient abans. És el mateix, tenen els mateixos objectius, però amb un altre... Sí. Sí. Hi ha més pregunta? I have a slide, if I show you the slide, just like to be a break, and then if you have a question, if you agree. Sí, les diapositives. Jo vull fer una pregunta, aviam, teòricament no és una situació de guerra, sinó que hi ha el Parlament, hi ha el Govern i per tant tot té que anar per a reaccions. Pregunto si és això o no. So she's asking that there's a situation of war, but if the... If the elections are still go, like it's a parliament, it's a year, it's like all the political entities for elections and so on. Yes, so basically the Afghanistan is a war, but she wants to know if it's still like procedures as elections, the parliament is still working. No, you know the West, the West is talking about so-called sanction. You know, so-called sanction. Why I mean so-called sanction? Because uh, they are acting, putting dust in the eyes of the people of the world that we did sanction the Taliban, but in the meantime, he revealed 40 million dollars sending to them in the name of the humanitarian support, you know, to the people. But most of the money looting by Taliban. So they, they don't want to lose Taliban. If they, um, um, for, um, they wanted to draw Taliban, otherwise it was possible to not bring them. So this, uh, the society now, no parliament and no, of course they don't believe in election, they don't believe in democracy. And election, imagine if tomorrow election in Afghanistan, what happened? The same history will repeat. All the boxes under, con okay, under the control of the, <laughs> all the boxes under the control of the You can, uh, let, let, let her tell me, about, let me talk about the election. Okay. Literally, no, it's obviously the election. Okay. okay. No, ara, ara diu que anem a una punt de dalt de les eleccions, però estava dient bàsicament que no, que no funciona i que el suport també que reben suport humanitari està aquí en els talibans. I now you're going to talk about the elections, right? Yeah, the election. I said that the US is not honest at talking. You got the point, no? That they are not honest. They are talking about sanction against Taliban to you, to the people of the West. But in the meantime, sending money to them. Sí, que als Estats Units està parlant de sancionar els talibans, però el que s'ha de dir és que tot el suport humanitari realment està anant cap als talibans. O sigui, no, és un contradictori. And for a second, if we think there is election, we have experience of the photocopy of the Taliban, the warlord when was in power, the boxes in the hand of them, as they wish, they count. They are doing corruption. So we have, we use this famous saying in the past uh, election, it is not important who is voting, it's important who is counting the votes. Uh -huh. And now again, the Taliban counting the votes. Yeah, who will que... come in parliament? That again, worse than Zoom. Llavors yeah. que, això, sí, que diu que i encara que ens imaginem que ara hi ha unes eleccions, al final tot és corrupció i la frase que estava dient que 
eh, es preguntarse no quién está votando, sino quién está contando los votos. Claro, claro. Los talibans por la primera es cuál era el estado del Parlamento, si va a conseguir proposar algunas propuestas en relación a los derechos de las personas, si va a conseguir no. Y la segunda pregunta es cómo era la llamada al proceso de resiliencia o resistencia, no sé cómo, de las personas. The first one is uh, if while you were uh, in the parliament, did you manage uh, to get any like rights for women in the type of forum, anything to improve the situation of women? And also yeah, when you were, had your um, when you were deputy, mm -hmm. and then how's the situation like? Nowadays, uh, what are women like? What are the actions uh, to have this resilience in Afghanistan? Yes, yeah, so like what did you manage to do while you were in Parliament regarding women's rights and what are women doing now to resist all this? You know, when I was in Parliament, I was not only representing half of the population, the women, I was representing men and women, as I strongly believe in equal rights of men and women. Most must uh, play their role, or both of them, in the society. But of course, regarding the women, uh, uh, always I was trying to raise the voice for them. For example, the disgusting laws that they were making. I remember once uh, they they were talking about um, about uh, the legal age of the marriage for the woman. Mm -hmm. Uh, one warlord have, has own interpretation about Islam. 16 is better of good age. Another one says another number. Nobody's talking about 18 years is the legal age according to the uh, International Human Rights Declaration. So that is why it's easy for them to change the law. Yeah. Yes. Um, bueno, primero mencionar que estaba representando a unas y donas y que al recordar, bueno, que me escarré de la, la veo de las donas del Parlamento y que al recordar un instante que estaban hablando de que no podía ser la, la edad legal para, uh, casarse. para casarse y que, todo, bueno, a partir de diferentes interpretaciones del Islam, están hablando de la sexa, pero que ninguno estaba hablando de los DeWitt y ella era como han de ser los DeWitt porque es a nivel internacional, es el que se habla y es el que ha de ser y se recuerda que es muy bien. Y sabes, la mayoría de los que estaban en el Parlamento creen, como los Taliban, que el Islam con la política se usa contra las mujeres, especialmente las mujeres. Están afuera del secularismo. So inside of parliament, not only democracy that they must use against us. Nobody dared to talk about secularism. And there, uh, I was talking, for example, about the other uh, human rights violation, human rights violation inside of parliament. As I told you, each time raising the finger to talk, they were not happy. Uh, so um, okay. I, I have a lot of memories that to share now. That is why I told you only one sentence is enough to tell you. All the law exists on paper, not try, not try to put in practice. If it was a problem for them, easy to change. But, easy to change, yeah. Eh, básicamente, primero mencionar que al, al que tiran por es de la secularidad y que los talibans eh, barrejan muy, muy política en religión, por eso que tiran por de que desaparece y y también que las leyes están en, en the laws are on paper yeah. las leyes están en papel y que por eso es 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 muy difícil de cambiar no por no, 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 no. 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 ejemplo we have constitution constitution have laws the law must be practiced but it exists on paper they didn't want to put it in practice oh. claro que estaba sí es verdad que tenía una constitución con las leyes que son las que en práctica pero no las puedo en práctica Yeah, and the second part question was about. It was about how women nowadays how are they like 
resistant all these days? Like, where are yeah, the women, women, you know, uh, of course, they are not uh, sitting silent. In different way, they are doing resistance. You may hear about the women on the streets, they are coming, it's a brave woman. <laughs> Their bravery is extraordinary. They are doing demonstration, Taliban beating them, arrest them. Just uh, two days before, again, three of them went to the jail mm -hmm. and now released. And still some of them, like Ella uh, was a, um, uh, a medical student, uh, first forced marriage with the high-ranking official of the Taliban, and then uh, divorce. Then uh, this brave lady exposed on the social media what uh, they did with her. And now they arrested her, wanted to escape to go to Pakistan, they arrested on the road. And now mm -hmm. she's uh, in the jail of the Taliban torture. Elaha is one that become famous while there's many Elahas nobody know, you know. They kill, you know, the first time when they come in Mazar Shari from a large number of people. Okay. Yeah, let me check. <laughs> um, Está parlant eh, que, les, que les dones avui en dia són la situació més valenta, o sigui que estan realment... Bueno, és el que estem veient a, 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 a totes les parts que van surten a, al carrer de la vida, eh, fan tots els tipus d'actes que són considerats il·legals pels talibans i... Pues, que és una situació... O sigui que realment ara, de tota la situació que s'ha viscut, és quan les dones estan mostrant més valentia i realment sortint al carrer a fer aquests actes de dissidència. A large number of the actors, women, they killed and then accused them as prostitutes. In Afghan society, we are most people not educated and they are in power and they accuse them as prostitutes and killing them. Even some family, because of the shame, they cannot go to, uh, to have the dead body of the dear one, you know, to bury it. And uh, even one doctor, uh, they, you know, on the middle of the road, they are not doctor, not such a nurse, uh, nurse, nurse, a midwife, a midwife, nurse, midwife, the one that would labor in the pregnancy woman, midwife. The midwife, you know, they did gang, they killed her in a very awful way. Yeah. Però, eh, bàsicament que moltes vegades eh, maten aquestes dones i diuen que la raó és eh, prostitució, que no ho és. I això causa, eh, bueno, causa molta vergonya cap a les famílies que no poden anar a retirar el cos. I... You're talking about a midwife? Yeah, a midwife on the middle of the road going from the hospital to house because midwife, you know that uh, who helped the delivery of the woman. Mm -hmm. When a very awful way killed uh, her, why you are with a man that who is not your mahra, who is not your main relative? What was the coolies of her? que acabem de donar una, una persona que ajuda les dones a torturar no més perquè estava amb un home que no pertenia de, de ser ella de família, perquè sí. ara amb lleis ja ha de ser o marit o sí. fill o algú de sang o... They are so stupid. People say, okay, when you are against a woman, that to be separate from the man. Tomorrow when your wife is sick, then go to the man doctor. They are so stupid too. Yeah. 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 A gent de les sales van separar les dones de tots els tipus de homes que són part de la seva família i que, clar, si la dona està malalta i ha d'anar al metge i és un home, què passa? O sigui, diu que tot això és molt estúpid, no contradictiu. Okay, this is the picture of one of the demonstrations as one of our friends asked about the resistance. Yeah, next. They always destroy the demonstration of the next picture. Here I said, where there is grouping, there is, uh, where there is oppression, there is resistance too, yeah? You see that? Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Sí, sí, sí. Bueno, pues si no, la Yeah, you see that uh, this is the demonstration of the woman that they are doing, Taliban, they describe. We use this pen to say, we are there is oppression, there is resistance to I mean, we are resistant. We are resistant. We are resistant. This uh, picture show you the poverty in Afghanistan since Taliban came in power. You see the number of the beggars and workers on the streets grow. I should mostrar la pobreza que hay en Afganistán. Más de varios demandas. Yeah, next one. I go quickly. As I told you earlier, they are selling their kidneys because of poverty, you know. And these are the people, the women you see in this kind of house that they displace people. They have to leave their houses because of the uh, insecurity coming to the some big cities like Kabul and these other, a little safer than others, yeah? Y bueno, yo aquí, pues aquí están, van en sus órganos y que ya van desplazando a la gente para la inseguridad, que es la marcha de estos dos aquí. Next, uh, this uh, the mother who is uh, the, has been written in Persia uh, for sale means that want to sell her daughter. Yeah. Next, next one. Yeah. Uh, this is a, a parliamentarian woman who was in Afghanistan that in the house going and killing. Era una diputada del parlamento que la mata. Yeah. Next. This, uh, these are um, my photos of the parliament. They, my friend liked it that uh, uh, anyway, you see that uh, the other day when I have been beaten in the parliament. And, um, anyway, you can go on my Facebook. Some photos there of the parliament. And I'm going to say that it's the day that they were hit physically in the parliament. Next one. Yeah, this is also that they are, uh, the CNN gave report of the poverty in Afghanistan and uh, this picture, uh, the blue color, the scarf, uh, ready to sell the daughter uh, for an old man. And this one, uh, already married, uh, 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 this little girl, nine years old, Parwana, wanted to marry. Both of them shows that how we still women are the victims. This one, the life uh, saved because uh, one Afghan uh, paid the money that the, because wanted to uh, exchange of money to sell the daughter, save the life. But this one, uh, not. I guess it's a memory of no one's the Lavancasa, and I guess it's a memory of the Astangula. As ven a un a un hombre más grande de inés y bueno la van a salvar porque va a haber una persona que va a estar en la que va a pagar las cosas. Well, there is money that media never give report. Next, this you see that they have banner in different way they do resistance. We want education. Education is not crime. For example, I said that uh, yeah, education is my right. Uh, uh, men and women is uh, like two wing of one world in the society. Uh, education is my slogan, our slogan. In different way, they want to show their love to education, and now they have no way except of the underground schools. Mm -hmm. And they are crying when the uh, school is stopped, they want to go, the doors are closed. Them. Yeah, yeah, the life of the woman, in this two pictures I wanted to compare, but it is not, okay? If the light not, then you can see better. Taliban time, with a black color hijab, with, uh, during war, uh, work. You see? The two pictures. To compare. Next one. This, these are some of these women who are there. There's many other who are arrested by Taliban who are doing demonstration. You know, their banner is like Iranian banner is woman, life, freedom. But their banner is work, uh, 
um, work, uh, bread, um, now says education, but before was saying uh, freedom. You know, work, bread, freedom, education. Work, bread, freedom, education. Yeah. Trabaj. Trabaja, I know a little bit of Spanish. <laughs> Not a lot. Uh, this, uh, you see, they are telling you a uh, woman of Afghanistan, this is a male domination society, women want themselves to stay at home. These are, you know, or the men of Afghanistan, they are telling you not allow their men, women to be educated. These are propaganda, don't trust it. Look, this woman uh, in the past 20, this is one picture of the, the name is John Tom, with the baby on the shoulder, enter the exam of the university. After this exam, can enter the university to continue the field of education, you know. This shows that how the people, the women, they want to be educated to play their role. Next one. It was in Bamyan. And this also resistance of people, uh, the woman, you know, when Taliban come in power, they do demonstration. Next. And this one, uh, also when they close down the school for the university, the girls cannot go. This also, it is extraordinary that not only women, men also, the teachers, you know, in different way, teachers of university, they get resistant. Some of them resigned of the post to show their hatred, and that the Taliban put these men also at the, at the jail and torture. And this is the Badakhshan, you know, in Badakhshan they come, they tell them, no, your address is not Islamic, again beating them and send them go. Next. This in Kabul, you know, in different ways. Hey, look, they are talking with the language of the gun. The woman with empty hands, they do resistance. You know, once uh, I several times I hear from the men of Afghanistan, progressive men, ordinary men, you know, ordinary ordinary men was saying, Malali, this is time the woman come in power, must come. Because in Afghanistan, all time the man was in power, they did nothing. <laughs> you know, I remember uh, since Logica 2003, uh, once I remember one Afghan come and told me, Mal, I gave you a scarf to me, I gave my uh, this turban to you. For them, the turban is something, you know, very important. Uh, and different way show their solidarity, their support. Yeah. Next one. This uh, picture also resistance of the woman. You hear a big amount of water. The clip when you see, you will move in Herat province. When the woman in the winter they do demonstration, they with the container of the and can see Yeah. In a different way, they do resistance. Uh, for us, it means a lot. You know? <coughs> but media never can report to you. Yeah. yeah, next one. This is also resistance of the woman, the students, and Nigar and Nigar. Each photo of different <coughs> provinces. These are the activists who are taking the social media, the Facebook, while the media, international attention, no. Again, they forgot Afghanistan. Next. And this is uh, this teacher I moved, I wrote on my Facebook also about, you know. He's a very talented teacher, and he went here at the degree of the, that had, he had the document um, uh, of master and uh, 
a professor of the university, you know, he resigned, resigned from the post and uh, publicly media condemned. And, and now uh, the books that he had uh, making, uh, mm, I don't know how to say it like this, uh, have with the, with the way that have, what to say, trailer. On the trailer report, uh, giving free the books, encouraging on the streets to the, to the girls. And then the, the students come and take photo with the, and he also went to the jail of Taliban. Yeah, many, many examples we have. And this, you see, a different way they do resistance in their house. Took the banners, they spread their message. Next. And here you see that uh, they take uh, publicly the reading the books to show their resistance. Yeah. Yeah, next. Yeah, here freedom, work, education. <laughs> the last demonstration, yeah. And education is our red line. Um, uh, no government exists without the rule of the woman. So no one exists for a long time, not exist. Yeah. Anyway, all the, each message has a nice, uh, each banner has a nice message to you. Yeah, yeah. powerful message. Next. Oh, this is me. And, and Logica 2003. And next, I don't know why you choose my picture. There's a lot of, a lot of picture, but you choose mine. Of course. Yeah. And these, you know, in the past 20 years, they were saying to you, uh, we are there, US and NATO, including the Spanish government, we are there to break women's rights. You may also hear that Laura Bush was telling you, first time we brought women's rights in Afghanistan. It is not true. And this piece of newspaper from 1960, you see, January 16, 1960, look how modern the women of Kabul, they more or less they dress like Western people and they play their role. This is an university on the streets. You can explain to them that women enjoy their life as 60s, 20s, before the But the poor Western government misuse from the situation of women, they say shame is to lie. We brought women rights in Afghanistan. Que al, la intervención de Estados Unidos sería que va a juntar a los derechos de las personas por primera vez ¿no? después de, de la lucha esa y nos invita a ver lo que ahora aquí que los 60 de los 70 las dos tengan una experiencia que no nos piden como aquí Ya, next one Sí, por siempre estoy Ya, these are some books I'm recommending if you have time I suggest uh, to read uh, Bleeding Afghanistan Next one. I is for infidel. All these writers I met as well. Uh, I is for infidel. Also about civil war talking to you before 9/11 when the Taliban war first time was in power from 92 to 96. Next. This is my book. If you have that. Yeah. Next. Next one. Yeah, one, one more book is The Ghost War. Ghost War, also a good book uh, if you uh, have time to write. And, uh, yeah, Ghost War and one more book. But you can write in a small yeah, If you want, I can write. Uh, I can send you. That is important because America wrote that. Uh, honest American writer, and uh, I mm, I want to tell you always I'm talking about these uh, mm, uh, warlords, Taliban, these criminals, and these occupiers. But uh, unfortunately, less time to talk about our powerful culture and also about the strong solidarity of the great people of the Western countries. Huge difference between the nations and the government. And I'm really short of words, and I'm more humble to talk about their solidarity and support. On behalf of my people that I went, for example, in the US when I went, in Spain I come, in other countries, always a strong support of these people, great people, gave me more hope and strength to continue to struggle. And uh, today also I saw my guys, one of our great American friends, uh, 
I can say, friend for me, anyone who raised a voice against all against fundamentalism, for peace, justice, we are on the same boat, struggling for the same cause. Yeah. Vamos, vamos, Carlos. Es que sí, eh, que es una manera que eh, no voy a hablar de la cultura de Enrique Bernstein, que es la que va a hablar de la guerra y la falta de derechos, y también de la suporta de la gente occidental que sí que muestra solidaridad a un pueblo afgano. And now let me to finish our event with the quote of this uh, woman I always inspired, this great woman, uh, Dia Ruta Luxembourg, who says that those who do not know, move do not notice their chains. Yes. Gracias. I just wanted to say that first of all I want to welcome you back here. Thank you so much for coming, for participating, for your words, for inspiring us again, because you've been my inspiration for a long, long, long time. Um, Realmente no estaré molt rato parlant perquè jo vull que sigui aquí personatge important, mala i joia i altres dones que conec a la meva vida, especialment la meva mare, inspiració de fortalesa i resistència en molts àmbits. Um, com he diu la mala i joia sempre que som generació de guerra, jo sóc l'Ema Rashid d'Afganistan i dic que sóc um, refugiada de naixement, perquè és veritat, perquè vaig néixer a un camp de refugiats a, a Pakistan, del que hem parlat molt amb Mala i Joia, i, i des de tota la meva vida sóc refugiada. He vist el meu país, que és Afganistan, pot ser dos o tres vegades, perquè havíem de passar per allà per eh, coses eh, de papers i per poder viatjar, sobretot per venir aquí a Catalunya, però tota la vida viure com una persona que no ets d'allà ni d'aquí i, i estar en un lloc que no et pertaneix i sempre buscar el teu lloc és molt difícil. Deixant en costat les dificultats econòmics, eh, psicològics, en totes les etapes, eh, adolescència, més gran, buscant la persona que ets d'adulta, és molt difícil no tenir les persones que et representen, l'idioma que et representa, el menjar que et representa i bueno, és un bagatge que jo crec que no ho deixes mai, sinó que cada vegada aprens fer el millor que pots no, a la teva vida i buscar persones com tu. I bueno, per mi ha sigut la meva mare que sempre um, hem compartit diguem, el dolor. Um, des de que hem... vam venir aquí el 2009, ja portem un... 2008, ja són quasi 15 anys que estem aquí. I 
I jo crec que he vingut algunes vegades, hi ha moltíssima gent que aquí hi ha la cara i el sona, sobretot la meva mare, però en tot aquest temps jo crec que mai pots agafar i dir, mira, ara sí que he arribat, ara sí he trobat la solució, ara sí ara està canviant, perquè sempre trobes una cosa nova, sempre hi ha una altra cosa per millorar, sempre hi ha una nova inspiració. Però a mi el que més m'ha afectat i diguem que m'ha marcat d'una manera que vull compartir amb vosaltres és l'ocupació un altre cop de talibans a Afganistan. Perquè com us explicàvem a la Joia, clar, jo he crescut en lluita d'aquestes dones, la meva mare, les seves germanes, les seves tietes, lluitant per el seu dret i sempre fent coses underground a Pakistan i sempre enterant-me, sí, ara passa això, ara passa allò, i després venir aquí, des d'aquí també, movent, conèixer gent com vosaltres, sempre estan en aquestes modes. I jo per mi, veure que amb tot aquest que hem donat, amb tot el que ha donat la meva mare, i amb la poca esperança que jo tenia de ganes de tornar al meu país, veure que un altre cop hem caigut amb el mateix és un impacte, és un trauma, és traumàtic, és un trauma, perquè et quedes allà pensant, dius, què hem fet? Què ha passat? Perquè jo, just abans que passi l'ocupació, que era 15 d'agost, potser, estava organitzant un viatge a l'Afganistan amb molta emoció perquè, clar, porto molts anys aquí i cada cop et fas gran i cada cop vols saber més d'on vens i tens més ganes d'entrar. Però no, ja no és possible, ja no és possible fins que jo, per exemple, tingui el passaport espanyol, que també és un... En sentit de paper, sí, és molt important, però sóc espanyola és un... No, no sóc espanyol. Vull dir, són coses molt simples, molt tontes, però com a persona impacta, perquè jo com vaig venir aquí també tenia la guerra de si sóc espanyol o catalana. Vull dir, és que és molt complicat i no es soluciona només anar a agafar un cita, que és impossible d'agafar, i dir, ah, vale, doncs ara ja tenim el títol. No, és... És un treball molt més íntim i intern que, desfortunadament, tampoc tenim molts suports per enfrontar tot això. Però, bé, tornant a l'ocupació, per mi ha sigut molt, molt traumàtic perquè és el moment on crec que hi va haver un moment a la vida de Malalai que ella, quan va ser elegida al Parlament, i va sentir com una gravetat de dir jo he de lluitar per un costat, sí, està molt bé que jo ho estava sentint quan van passar perquè és una injustícia contra la teva persona i contra la teva llibertat però a l'altra banda dius en sèrio hem de passar per això un altre cop i jo he de fer per què jo he de també seguir diguem aquesta generació de guerra i està en la mateixa lluita, no?, perquè és injust. I amb això voldria acabar perquè, com deia Malai Joia, la meva història també és molt extensa i no donar temps, esteu ja cansats també i tampoc vull que sigui el foco de la tarda, la meva vida i les meves experiències, que si no simplement, doncs, ajuntar que existeixo també i soc d'Afganistan, però sobretot, sobretot, donar-li la benvinguda a Malai Joia, que feia anys que no la veia i la veritat, només veure-la, sentir-la, és una inspiració, perquè per mi, creixent, sempre ha sigut un exemple a seguir. Espero que hàgiu disfrutat de la seva presència com jo. Moltíssimes gràcies i moltíssimes gràcies. Realment seguirem. Vull dir que no és l'últim dia, és un dia que hem deixat... I un dia parlarem de la cultura d'Afganistan i de la cultura de ser refugiada catalana, espanyola, afganesa. 
I bueno, i sabeu que aquí tenim un trosset, un trosset de casa per continuar amb aquests espais, no? I que s'obren els 30 anys sempre acompanyades de molta tristesa, però també de molta força, que ens han donat elles i que continuem. Resistim. Que sempre hem sentit igual, no oblideu les hores de la llista. No ens oblideu, que no ens oblideu. I com diguem, dones, vida, llibertat, perquè diguem-li que per nosaltres quan diguem vida, diguem educació, diguem salut, diguem treball, que vida, dones, llibertat, o sigui que podem acabar totes diguem dones, vida, llibertat. I com sempre, ens podem fer una foto totes juntes com a record, vinga.